one of the little projects that I have on the go is uh, this neat little bow that I have right here. Uh, I made this out of a Saskatoon uh, Saskatoon tree, a small Saskatoon tree, and I just carved it up. And uh, I'm giving this as a gift to my nephew because uh, uh, he's he's into bows and arrows now. He's just a little guy, and and uh, I'm making it for him. So what I'm going to do with some of the sinew that you see here? Here's uh, some moose and some deer sinew. I'm going to put some sinew backing on this bow right here. So basically the idea is these little pieces of sinew here. I'm going to soak them in hide glue and I'm going to paint the back of this bow with hide glue and then soak these in hide glue and then lay them on there. And this is what we call sinew backing your bow. So this is the back of the bow. This would be the belly of the bow. And I think the more hand craftiness that I put into it using natural materials, I think the, the cooler effect it'll have as a gift to my nephew. So the process is, is going to be quite simple. Here's some sinew that I've already pounded. This is, is uh, the sinew from the back, along the back straps that I pounded. And then these white shorter ones are the tendons right there. So they're still a little rigid when you, you soften these, either by putting them in your mouth and using your own saliva or water or whatever, they, they turn like soft like a spaghetti noodle and then you can work with them easily. Right now they're still fairly rigid, but uh, as you'll see, they'll soften up as I lay them on the back. Let's talk about hide glue. So the way to make hide glue is to take all the shavings from a hide when you, when you flush out and scrape a hide and to take little bits or pieces of, of hide, uh, little bits of hoof from the animals and that sort of thing and you, you boil it, you simmer it for a long time. I haven't done that process and here we are on the edge of Christmas time and, and I got to get this gift out to my nephew so instead I took a shortcut which is a modern shortcut and there's two different things that I'm looking at here. So number one is uh, Tight Bond happens to put out a product called Genuine Hide Glue. Pro's choice since 1935, longer assembly time. So just a quick talk about this stuff here. Um, the, the reason that they're likely selling this is because of its application in musical instruments. So Hide Glue is, is desired for musical instrument uh, construction because you can glue, glue together wooden parts of guitars, mandolins, uh, you know any type of wooden instrument. You can glue together the joints and should that guitar down the road need repairs by administering water because it's hide glue and a natural glue, the, the glue joints will actually separate and come apart by soaking them in water. So you can rework that which you've glued together. So this type of hide glue, not ideal for, for a bow and arrow or for a bow that's going to be outside in the rain and the weather. It'll likely come up, come apart. So what you have to do then if you tend to use this is you, you actually have to coat it with something. You can wrap it with snake skin or rawhide or you could even put a varathane or a shellac on it and paint it over top. You have to waterproof it somehow. Otherwise you're, you're risking that the, the glued sinews that are on the back of that bow will actually come apart and fail on you. So, so that's one of the problems. So, but I mean, this is readily available online and because I'm in a bit of a time crunch, I'm not going to use this product. Instead, I'm going to take a step up and I'm going to go with Tight Bond 3 Ultimate Wood Glue, which is waterproof. And from what I understand by researching on the internet, uh, people are using this to send you back bows. So this is a modern step forward. Yeah, it's just, it's a, you know, it's a modern synthetic glue. But from what I understand by researching sinew backed bows online as people are using it and for this project it's going to make do. Uh, there is a much lengthier process if you use the real hide glue as, and as I mentioned you have to you have to take bits of hide scrapings and hoof and boil it and simmer it down boil it down until uh, you get a kind of a, a gluey substance 
that's remaining after the water boils off and, and that's your real hide glue. You can also purchase hide glue online. Uh, hide glue online that's actually dried into little amber-like pellets and you buy them in a bag and they send the, the pellets to you. They can be fairly expensive and then you have to heat that up and, and uh, get it softened to work with it. But uh, these have a chemical of course to keep it liquidy. So, so there you go. And I'm going to just go ahead and start working on it. Now I'm going to just work the hide glue on the back and that's it. Up to about there. Now some people will take the sinew and they'll go right up and over and it'll actually give you strength uh, strength for the knock point here that I've carved in. So you could take the sinew and wrap it right up and over with this, you know, like this kind of idea. Right up and over and what that'll do is it'll strengthen that knock point. This is a pretty low poundage bow and I'm not super concerned about that being an issue. So I'm going to stop right about there. So there's just a layer of hide glue put on there like that. And we'll set that down and now the tricky part is going to be getting this wet. Get it nice and soppy. And I may discover, because I haven't worked with this, this type of glue before, this, um, you know, like real hide glue would be quite liquidy. So we're going to just see how this goes. There, it's softening it up quite a bit. I can see that this will be a fairly lengthy little process. Oh. I'm really liking how this is looking. It's going to give it a little bit of cool, like an interesting finish look for sure. And uh, yeah, we'll see what it looks like when it dries using this type of glue. But so far it's kind of cool. And uh, see what it looks like when I first pull it back. I'm just trying to balance it all out so it looks fairly nice and even all along here. Good. There's one of the limbs. So now what I'm going to just do is paint over it. And now if I was going to go uh, go hard on this and make this into a, a real big bow project, I'd put on one thin layer, one thin layer like this, and then let it dry for uh, you know, a few days and then put on another layer and let it dry and put another layer and let it dry, for example. By putting this sinew backing on it, it strengthens the bow, for one. Uh, it also will increase somewhat the uh, the draw weight of the bow too, because it, it just adds to the strength overall of the bow and it increases the draw weight. Um, I'm going to unstring this just for now. I should have probably done that at the start. There, so what I've done is I've just taken the string off and you'll see this this little Saskatoon bow <laughs> little project that I got going, it actually is in the shape of the curve so it didn't really swing back a little bit. I have a feeling that if I would have really soaked these they would have uh, really absorbed the glue and then perhaps in the drying process they may actually curve it back and straighten it a little bit and pull on it like that. 
So now I'm going to just kind of do a final dress on there and make sure that it's saturated with the hide glue and covered in all the places that I can. And I, I don't have it completely covered. That would be in subsequent layers of hide glue. But I don't know that for this project I'm going to worry about that too much. I'm trying to see if I can fill in all those little holes. And I, I know that, I mean, the way that white glue typically behaves is it tends to uh, shrink a little bit when you try to fill in large holes. It's better meant to seal in joints, right? So I'm not expecting this to really fill very well, but I am expecting it to grab and hold very well. So I'm going to let it dry and then uh, I can choose to sand it. But I'm going to wait and see what it looks like when I'm done because I have a feeling that it might look really cool. And for a, uh, a young boy to get this as a gift, if it looks cool and strange and unusual and, and a little bit unfinished as far as, as, far as uh, the, all this roughness goes back on here, I think that'll probably have some cool factor for, uh, for a young boy. So I can just flip the bow over like that. And I'm going to have to take care that I don't end up uh, getting that glue all over me, but so it goes. The bowstring that I have here is made out of a wax nylon. So uh, I could have made the bowstring out of the sinew too. Uh, that would actually be a cool project, but time's not going to allow that for me to do that now because we're right on, we're creeping in on Christmas here in three days. I feel like Bob Ross. Here's a happy little bow. Here's a happy little sinew. We'll just paint a few little happy little clouds here. Happy little sinews. What happy little hide glue. <laughs> All right, so here, here we are at the next day. And this is what it looks like after uh, almost 24 hours of drying, which is pretty cool. You can see all the sinew there. Here I've got uh, quite a bit. Uh, I've done a good job right there of coating the entire back with the sinew and then here as we move down we can see that I've got some spots that I missed and uh, yeah so my I'm going to endeavor next to go ahead and and fill in those few little spots and get it a little fuller down to the end so that, that overall it looks consistent all the way through kind of like this and that is a sinew backed bow now because I use the waterproof uh, tight bond wood glue uh, I'm not too concerned about waterproofing this. Had I used this this hide glue, uh, which tends to unravel and loosen when it's wet, I would then have to coat it with snakeskin or rawhide or paint some kind of a varnish or a shellac on there, something to waterproof it. And and uh, then it's just a matter of stringing the bow and and letting that dry and cure fully, and then uh, giving it away as a gift. So pretty cool. Let's look at another another use of sinew here. I'm just going to pick this up. So here's a little piece of sinew. Fairly rigid, so this has been pounded. So it is soft, and I could use that to sew right now. I could, I could uh, quite easily uh, just put a needle and a thread on there and, and use it to sew your garments together, or sew anything together for that matter. So I'm going to use uh, this arrow that I have here as an example of where you can use the sinew. I'm going to uh, tighten up these feathers on the arrow shaft by putting a wrap of sinew right around the leading edge of the feathers just so that they're a little stronger and uh, able, a little more durable and able to withstand uh, the rigors of being shot through grass and twigs and off the bow and that sort of thing. And so here we have a little piece of sinew and a common way to soften the sinew is to stick it in your mouth. Okay, so fairly rigid. Put it in your mouth for just a few seconds and I'm just soaking it in my saliva. Now I could use water too, of course. 
and I can feel it softening in there now. So in pulling it out now, it's gone from that rigid thing that you saw before. So if I, I hold it here and let go, it's like a spaghetti noodle. It's all soft, just with a few seconds of softening in with my saliva. So there you go. So now I can effectively wrap it around and around. And now I'm going to just twist. And the beauty about the sinew, of course, is that when it dries out, it will bond on there. Well, I guess when it dries out, it will harden and stay in the shape that you've put it on there. So I could choose to not use a knot of any kind here and just wrap, or if I wanted to, I could tie it with a knot. So just leaving it like that will allow it to now dry and harden and it'll be on there uh, permanently. There's a downside just as we talked about before with the bow it's not waterproof so if I take this out in wet weather and that gets wet it's going to soften it and unravel it so I'd have to coat it with bare fat or uh, some kind of water protectant. I gave the bow to my grandnephew at Christmas time complete with a little quiver and some arrows to go with it and also wrap the handle with a bit of squirrel fur and added a blue jay feather and some squirrel tail silencers on the string and I do believe that this little sinew backed bow made somebody uh, very happy and perhaps there's a future archer or hunter in the works. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this series. Take care and remember to subscribe to our channel for more videos.